Well, hello everyone. Today is a little different video because we're going to talk about system architecture of home security type of systems. And I'm not really going to push a particular brand or anything like that. We may run across some, but we're going to talk about something to stay off of the everybody else has already produced this video type of content. We're going to talk about the architecture itself. So let's roll title and be right back. All right, well, let's start with something that's going to be similar to what we all think about is in terms of what is a security system video surveillance system. I have a, I have a page pulled up here, and now we see that this is just your Google, right over here at Google, and I did PoE camera systems. And what is a PoE camera system? Well, it's power over Ethernet, and that gets us back to some basic concepts. Back in the good old days, if you look at any old movies, you would see uh, cameras. Usually they're big cameras are standing on a, on a wall or underneath a building or, or post or somewhere, and they're large. And what we had to do was we had to power them. So we had to run 120 to each camera, and we had to have one, uh, 120 to each of the video monitors in wherever the security room was. And we'd run cable back and forth, video cable. And in the early days, not all of them even had audio. So we would get more sophisticated as time went on. We got where we could add magnetic tape. Most of us have grown up, we already had video cassette recorders of some sort. And so we think that if we go back from the CD or DVR back to videotape, that's the ancient ages. Well, if you go back far enough, we didn't really have magnetic tape as a media for video widespread in most cases. So we would have a big room of, of, of incredible gear lots of heat lots of wattages just to run the cameras but all the cameras worked all the time and you'd if you had a monitor for each of the camera you could see live feed at any one time and some of this more sophisticated you could then switch down the video to a bigger screen so you could see what you had going on we kind of mimic that nowadays with the the multiple rectangles across a you know monitor screen so let's get back to these things what is poe well we'll pick one of them here's a 16 channel poe fifteen hundred dollars we'll wait for it to come up and what it is, is obviously a bunch of cameras, and you can set those any different way. And if we got a back picture of this thing, usually we'll see that there is, uh, let's see, go around to this, we'll see what power over Ethernet is. Old days, this mimics the old days. Without power over Ethernet, you had to power the, uh, the camera itself and then bring your data back. This obviously has got Ethernet cable, so it was digital, already digital. But power over the Ethernet is just that. You power the camera one wire. It makes your installation easier to do. So I, I want to see if I can... There it is. There's a good picture of what's on back. And so basically you have something that looks a lot like your um, router. you just got bunch of these ports, and you just take an Ethernet, your Cat5, Cat6, whatever it may take. It should be Cat5, I think. And that's not too hard to wire. The problem is when you have an existing system, existing house getting that ethernet cable routed to each of the corners of the house or wherever you might want to mount a camera the good side with it good size uh, application can take a little bit of time to wire all that cable up but once you're done you're good and if you wire it from the very beginning your house is, is a good way to do this using a system something like this where you have your magic black box you just pull all your cables here and because we have one power going into it and we're powering the cameras through the inner the ethernet we can put this device on a backup and we have our cameras running for a length of time depending on how much wattage this thing uses because again it powers those cameras so that's a good way to do it and you can get your monitor i think it shows a little picture up here how to do a, a video of significance it pops up and you can have your other cameras run around the outside. This, this is all vendor specific, but you get the basic idea, I think. You have a magic back black box that handles it, and it may actually do some notification uh, through the internet. It may have a connection like that. It may do notifications through the internet and push notifications, but it's a basic, nice, simple little system. Close the circuit so that there's not going to be a lot of fiddling about with it. But a lot of us don't really have that for our um, operations we end up with something that is quite simple we have a difficult house that's already put together and we want to have some form of uh, camera wireless cameras or wired cameras are way to go now it's kind of a misnomer here i have the first ones i use are in this nest series i started first with a doorbell doorbell camera because i'm late to the game i'm thinking still old school pulling wire everywhere my house already built it's hard to get all of those cameras where i want them to be eight or 16 cameras where i want them to be 
So I want to do something that a homeowner can easily do and I started to go with a wireless camera that actually is wired powered. Now, remember when we had that little picture a while ago of the power over Ethernet versus powering the camera and, and taking the signal back. The signal is wireless, but you have to power the camera. So in this, in this type of camera I have here, much like the, the doorbell, it's actually wired directly. It's wired to the house and the internet is wireless through a uh, streaming. The problem with that is, is it simulates to a great deal uh, the old system because it's live all the time, but it has a negative to it other than the fact they have to pull power. If we look at it in the, in the grand scheme of things, the net cams, the first one, the nest cams, the first ones were wired. We had to wire basically uh, a USB power to it and it came on a power brick, except it was round like a hockey puck and it was wired into on the end of a cable, power cable. You had to find one tin somewhere to plug it in, a receptacle somewhere to plug it in. And the other end was like an extension cable, long extension cable for USB square on one side and the, and the, uh, the, the rounded micro on the other side or whatever they call that, that style. But anyway, USB power into the camera and it had to be powered up all the time. There was no battery, anything like that. So you're limited where you could put those particular Nest cams in. I put one on the well house, I have power in the well house, and I have power on the side of the house I could get through, wired them up. Now the one bad thing about that, because they're kind of simulating that live kind of old control room style thing, when we pull it up we get live video. All right, I have this pulled up. This was a difficult thing to set up on tripod. Let me unplug my cable, get that out of the view so it looks a little bit nicer. Here's a typical telephone. If I pull the Nest app up, when it runs up, it's going to give me something that simulates a little bit that same feed that we had in the old days where we had a video monitor system and all the cameras were live all the time. The Nest is, and it gives you a picture of the driveway, and that's the, that's the doorbell. It's a little distorted. And down at the bottom, we see a side view of the property. And that works pretty well. The downside to the way the architecture is set up for the Nest is they were they initially were required to be all wired cameras power wise and wireless signal coming back. And that signal does not go anywhere locally, it goes to the cloud. And so it takes bandwidth out of your internet to run that type of camera. It's live all the time unless it goes to sleep or something like that, but it's permanently powered and that limits your location where you can put them. But it streams live video. This is 1080p, 30 frames per second, full HD, that is going to the cloud to be processed on massive servers somewhere and then come back to us down here in the hollow. And when I tell it to, to bring it up, I bring up three live feeds. It works out pretty well. The downside to that, other than having to be wired, is it streams all the time to the cloud. Now, you get specific into it as far as the number of days you can go back and look at. That gets you pretty quick into, wrangles you into, loops you into, lassos you into a pay for subscription. Now, some of the basic features are there, but if you want to go back and review a few, more in a few days, you have to do it. Or if you want to download clips, you have to pay for it. Or if you want, I think the activity zones that you can block, block out, it will make you pay for it. Now, they do have those. Let me bring that back. If I were to bring in on this on the driveway, bring it up. If I click this and I want to see the activity zones, I think this will show up. You see on the camera here, you see red and green. I have them defined a little bit differently. One is all, like all motion. I'm looking for cars and the other I'm looking for humans. Well, some of these features may not be available to you if you don't have the subscription. But I'm talking about the architecture. How does it work? The wired in camera transmits constantly to the cloud. The cloud sends back to the phone or whatever you might have your device where your app is and there can be a little bit of delay in that. It's called lag so you can have a little bit of that but you get live feeds and you can get a quick glance at that the downside is is it bogs down your internet you have to have a minimal amount of internet that you're going to give away to each of those devices each of those cameras from now and to the end of time because they're going to stream to it and if you live somewhere out real really rural or maybe, uh, I don't know, in, in some uh, agricultural area, maybe you live in the mountains of Utah or someplace like and you don't really have strong internet, these types of cameras are going to limit you pretty quick to what you can, how many devices, how many places you can watch. But they're nice because they're kind of live in that respect. Now, Nest Cam didn't make a battery cam, but you need to go look at the reviews on that puppy. They were not really well received because the battery portion of it, you have to charge up 
and then of course recharge and recharge and it's a live streaming type of camera so unless they're doing something to limit the amount of power drain they're going to give you a fit all right so let's look at something here i'm going to bring up if you like this content please go to calldeltacell.com find the tab that says on youtube click it and it'll open up a page of qr codes there you can use a smartphone to scan and get to the youtube page or you can just mouse over and click it on a pc there you'll be able to subscribe to this little button over here and click the notification bell so that youtube will notify you thank you do you know what one of these things are? These are your typical trail cams, your surveillance cam. You, you don't have to use them for watching wildlife. You can use them for different things. But they're going to, I'm going to use this to introduce to you the next kind of common architecture that we'll have. And, there, and a lot of different brands use this. Okay, this is a camera. If we open it up, we'll have memory cards that we can put in it on the inside of it. Without going into the features, down here we have the passive infrared detectors. These are, these are just looking to wake the camera up to tell it to do so. It runs on batteries. It runs on uh, AA batteries and it takes uh, enough of them, I think 8, to make 12 volts. And they last a while. They last longer if we do nothing with it than if we actually do activity. And it works better during the daytime at night. You see up here, if I can't really get a good view of them, but up behind these windows are a bunch of LEDs. These are your infrared nighttime array to light up like little baby flashlights the area so that you can see what you're doing and they only go so far so generally powerful leds more of them can get you a little further into the darkness even if we trip off of this it doesn't do much good if we can't get the ir out there to to reflect back off of the the woods or whatever we might be taking picture of the squirrel the possum at night that kind of thing so your security cameras will mostly have something like this they can do either what to call low glow or no glow and all that's defined is at the at the top end of the infrared spectrum we humans can see just a little bit of red some animals can see that red down a little bit further it's out of our spectrum and their spectrum they can't see it the lights can come on look bright like a flashlight we never see it they never see it not all animals are like that i can tell you for a fact owls can see all the way down into the the non-visible infrared spectrum that this one puts out but we have a camera up top and it does the video you can often turn that video off from using infrared so that you save battery and you can configure it to record shorter clips at night than in the day because daytime you don't need a light the sun's doing it so you can get more daytime shots longer daytime activity shots than you can at night but how it works is very simple it sits at idle until something trips it then it increases the battery drain because it's starting to record video record video puts it on a little memory card like this and we have to manually retrieve it some of the video cameras that are out there are just like that you have to physically access the camera to pull out a memory chip the thing about that is anybody else can pull that memory chip too if they can get physical access to the camera and hackers if you're that close to the camera just steal the camera with it so how does the architecture how do we set these systems up so that we're not taking the evidence that we just stole your camera away with the camera is we have to upload it somewhere and that's pretty straightforward so when you look at the cameras look where they do storage local storage is good obviously because you control the access to it you can hide your local storage where somebody can't get to it like locking up that black box right so if you if you're you have internal storage that's fine otherwise it'll have to stream to the cloud and you most likely you'll have to pay for access to get your images back through but now that camera works like uh, these i have right here you switch this over the nest cams are live this type of systems you see all over all kinds of myriads of different ways we can implement a lot of these are intermittent cameras and so what they all do is just like that trail camera it sits because it's battery operated which makes it easy for us to install them just about anywhere higher is better than lower where we have to get a ladder to get to them to steal your camera higher is better but it's a pain in the butt when you have to take it down and charge that battery back up Wi-Fi connected, most of these are Wi-Fi connected, and they go to a device. Now, some of them, when they work, they do the same way that the Nest does, except they're not working all the time. They work like the trail cam. Activity triggers the camera, it comes awake, it takes it, has to figure out what's going on, sending, it, sending that stream to the cloud. The cloud may do AI on it, may decide whether or not that's a person or thing or car or pet, depending on the sophistication. It may just know that there's activity, take that activity, go through the system, notify you back down here in your neighborhood. So that's fine. Well, that 
activity, every bit of the activity takes some battery away. If you have to use the infrared, that takes battery away. But what if you live, say, in an urban environment with lots of light noise? Lots of street lights and car lights and, and things of this nature, bright, shiny moons and that kind of thing. You may be able to run, if your camera will let you, in just direct uh, infrared mode, no extra light being generated. And that will extend the battery life. So you quickly start to, to see why most of these systems act like one of these, where they're going to trip, they're going to sit idle to extend the battery. And when something happens, they're going to take it and do something with it, whether they process it directly or send it away, depends on the device. But the down result of that is, is that you will not get live feeds all the time. So let me show you a system that I have. All right, we're back to the, cam the, the cell phone on the side. Right here, I have an app called the Eufy app. I'm going to bring it up. And it responds fairly well. It's, it's, this last iteration has got a, little, got a few bugs to it. But you see, we have some cameras being able to be displayed in it and our devices for some door switches and whatnot. None of these are live. They're the last action that it, that it recorded that it saw. If I want to see something, I have to bring up the live view directly. And that will activate the camera, start using batteries. Right now, it's not doing anything other than sitting out there like a trail cam waiting for something to happen. So let's see if we can get one of these to pull up. It's been acting a little finicky here lately. I've got uh, something at the front here on this camera. We'll bring up that snapshot, see what it shows you. All right, look like it malfunctioned from the uh, encryption. All right, with the Eufy app, I've recently upgraded three generations of Android to this new phone and put in, a, uh, relocated a camera during process. It's a little bit glitchy now than it wasn't before, but you click up the app, and as it comes up, you'll notice that I get the camera views, previews. They're based on the last event except for this camera, which for some reason will not retain the updated last event picture. So that's something that's a little goofy in, in Eufy right now, a little goofy Eufy. Now, if you want to see it live, you can see live view, but these work like those trail cams that they wait for an event. So they're offline most of the time. I have to wake it up, push the button, and let's see if it comes online. It does, and I don't know if you can see, there's the, the bandwidth, 111k a second, 500. That's live. Somebody just drove by. See if I can rotate it and get the uh, video to go horizontal. Okay? So I'm looking at the screen. I do have that. And you can see about what the video looks like. Is that good enough to uh, determine if somebody's uh, messing about? I think it probably is. It's not perfect. It is highly compressed. And with this is a um, 2C Pro, a newer camera. It's supposed to be 2K. I don't know if it is. File sizes are fairly small, which means they're highly compressed and they may be interpolated. We can go back and see live view. See, this is at night and we can review an event. That's a school bus going by. Let me see if I can get that event to pull up. Okay, so it's at the front. Let's push the button. There we go. Now let's see if I can rotate this to get it to uh, replay again so you get uh, more of a full effect. That's a night vision view. Is that good enough to suit you? Now remember, these are only 15 frames a second, so they're not truly HD in, in terms of, uh, was it uh, 1920 and 1080p 30 frames? They're that at half the frame rate. So that saves some of that bandwidth, some of the response time, hopefully. You can look at uh, some of the security things. I have two base stations. Both of them are doing local recording. If I hit, like, say, the blue one, I can pull it up and it sees I have it in off motion, but I can come up at the top, it says automation. With this type of, of camera system, I can actually chain events. The red one, I can set off alarms. The, uh, the blue one, as you see, I've got two door switches. So if the door switches trip, what they're actually going to do is turn that one camera on. So I've got a garage camera. And if you open the door, either one of those doors opens, it will trick trigger the camera. Not all of the systems that you may have may do all of that. So it's just going to be figuring out how you want to rob Peter to pay Paul. I don't think there's anything better than the than a live PoE, power over internet, multi-camera being powered out of a single unit that you can put on backup to record all the time and maybe use the internet for some AI and some uh, uh, facial recognition, that kind of stuff, notification, that's not so bad. The idea is that you record things locally. That Eufy system records things locally because it records it to the base station. You don't get 
notification without the internet, but you can still get recording if you have them on backup. The cameras are already backed up because they're on battery. If you just back up the, the base station, it will record during a power outage. If your internet run, runs off of a battery backup, if your router, your internet system stays up, it will actually notify you and come back down even with the power out. Some of these other cameras that rely totally on the internet, the Nest system, if I'm not repeating myself, works. I think the video is better. It too goes out sometimes for no apparent reason. Maybe it's being updated and I don't know that, but they'll go down from time to time. And it works pretty well. And when I pull it up in it, let's go back to that. Let's go back to that and hit that one more time. Here's the camera. I mean the cell phone, if I hit this on the Nest, when it pulls up, it's going to pull up all three cameras, rotate it back. All three of these cameras are live. So I, I lose that functionality with the, the architecture that the battery operated, many of the battery operators work on because they only use battery when they need to be using battery. And a live use will certainly drain that down. The Nest, because it's powered, is more like the old security system. The downside is it's going to suck down your bandwidth like your layabout no good uh, boyfriend of the, of the second granddaughter or whatever. It, they're just going to drink that beer all the time whether you want them to or not. Whereas that Eufy system and the battery operating systems, many of those will work only when they're called on to do so. And that's where the AI the level of AI can really help reduce false alarms. And they can help you when you want to go back and pick up you know, maybe you want to look for Dan. Maybe you've got a facial recognition of somebody named Dan. You want to know all the events where Dan was over at the house. You can filter it by people. You can filter them in different things. Different systems have different levels of integration. So what does all that mean? It means there's a crap ton of different options you have out there. And the best, of course, is going to be a closed circuit TV that your house was built for. And you've got all those cameras wired in. They're powered all the time. You can put the, the recorder on a, back, on a backup. And even if you don't get notification because it relies on the cloud to notify you, even then you're still recording data. We take like the Eufy system that uses the base station. If they spool the video to the base station, you're still, re you're still recording what goes on. The cameras are battery backed up. So as long as they have battery, they're going to work. The base station can be backed up on a battery, either external UPS, or you could have the battery backup that comes with some of the models. Base Station 2 has a matching battery backup, so it can ride you through those little glitches, the little thunderstorms, so you still have battery. It's still recording. Again, if you need to rely on the internet to give you your notification, your network has to stay up. But it keeps a lot of that traffic off of your, your home system still catches it but it's going to have some lag it's going to have some delay now there's some off brands that probably make some pretty good stuff but you're probably not going to do as well integrating other devices with a cam with a company only makes one camera or two cameras something like that so what you buy look at how it works ask the question do i have to pay a subscription to use activity zones or the notification zones or the detection zones whatever they might call it do i have to pay to get my footage download it off of wherever it is. Okay, you got it recorded. Do I have to pay a fee just so I can click and save a suspicious event? Also, you might want to ask, how long are the batteries supposed to last and in what conditions? Very, you know, 10 second clips, five second clips for six months? Or is it more active if I do a live view? Is that going to drain my battery? How hard is it to upgrade? Do you actually have matching solar panels that will cut themselves off without damaging the batteries in those expensive cameras. What is the real resolution? The, the UV cams, I think, fib a little bit when they describe them as being um, HD or 2K or 4K because they're only running half the frame rates. So they're getting half the frame rates. Now, rather than look at some individual footings, which I guess we could do, we still have the same problem. If you're taking half the frame rates, your file size gets really small which means they can process it quicker but you're going to lose your resolution on it is it good enough to catch a thief probably but you're going to rob peter to pay paul in any way if you're going to save on installation because it's not wired and powered all the time where everything is live you're probably going to give up some other feature that just seems to be how it works so i hope this is although it's a little bit rambly i hope you understand the difference between a, a wired like a power over ethernet wired system that's up all the time to the systems like the Nest that are wired, for the most part, they're wired in all the time, draining the battery, streaming live all the time, but they take up bandwidth that if you have glass or cable, 
you may be able to put as many cameras on as you can afford to buy. They're limited by, of course, where you can plug them in at, how you can power them. So even if you have your network on battery backup, your network doesn't go down your, your whether it be telephone cable or fiber optic, something like that, that can stay up. But if the power locations that those individual Nest Cams plug into die, the camera dies. So you lose your security at that point in time. Systems like the UFE that, that have a wireless connection and, wireless, and battery for the power, they're good. But the more you use them, the quicker those batteries are going to die. And you have to be able to keep them charged up. You want to keep them high where somebody can't steal them. But you got to get a ladder out every time to take them down just to recharge them. So you can fiddle around with some of the detection settings. Do you have to pay for a subscription to use AI on the devices. If you want to use car detection to, to cut down the number of false trips you have of something going across the way or notification zones or exclusion zones, if you have to pay for that, then that's going to really cut into your battery life if you can't use those things inherent in the device. In other words, it's going to be coming up, it'll come up, decide that it's not something it needs to worry about, turn itself off. Otherwise, it's just going to be sending a lot of false information and notification. Will it do rich, uh, what we call rich notification, or commonly called rich notification? Do you get a thumbnail of a picture along with the text that says, hey, at the gate, something went past it. Here's a picture. It looks like a red truck. Okay, that's good. I don't necessarily need to open up, waste my battery, spooling back and forth from uh, any of the systems. Don't have to do that. Don't have to relook at it can gloss right over. But if it just tells me I got a notification at the side shed, I might have a lot of annoying false triggers. So anyway, think about how the system works. You need to ask how the system works, not as much what it costs, because you can get tripped into a lot of things that don't make very good cameras that, that are not very useful. You buy them and then you've just kind of sunk that money for nothing. So I hope this helps. It's a little bit off the beaten path to talk about how the art, how the systems are designed to work all right, so that's it. Spent too much time on this already. Hope I didn't waste your time. Just remember, when you're looking for stuff, look less for the brand and more for the function. That's it. See ya.